Skeleton Hour, 425, scrapbook. Take one. From Television City in Hollywood, the Red Skelton Hour, brought to you by New AeroShave, the moisture-packed shave cream that won't dry out, keeps drenching your beard all through the shave. We present to you all something new that we call the Skelton Scrapbook, with a great deal of pride we shall take you Good evening. <laughs> In case you're wondering, I, I'm not really Red Skelton. <laughs> I don't even look like Red Skelton. I don't look like Betty Davis. I'll tell you who I really am. For the benefit of those of you who have been unemployed enough as to have followed my career, <laughs> I'm quite sure you know my name. And for any of those who do not, especially people under 80, my name is Ed Wynn. Thank you very much. <laughs> the, important, the important thing is the privilege which has been handed me tonight. I'm going to be the host, your host tonight, on this special program called Red... What's his last name? Oh, yes, Skeleton. Red Skeleton Scrapbook. Now, tonight, Red is going to do uh, some sketches and pantomime with which he has become very closely identified and which have been most requested by all you. So let's start the thing right off right now. Ladies and gentlemen, Red Skelton. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. And thank you, Mr. Wynn. You know, isn't that wonderful to stay that young for all these years, you know? Which proves it's all in your mind. I had an uncle, and he used to say, don't pay any attention to him. He thinks he's sick. He used to say, I'm sick. Well, I don't feel good. I said, he just thinks he's sick. <laughs> well, he's really in trouble now. He died the other day. <laughs> he thinks he's dead now. <laughs> I feel good. You know where I was? I was down at the Grand Canyon. Hey, a lot of you folks are out here in California for the first time. You're so close by. Have you been to the Grand Canyon, anyone? Huh? Have you been there? Yeah. Oh, you should go. You're so close by, you should go, especially if you have children because they have these big canyons, see? <laughs> no, I don't mean to throw the kids in. <laughs> you can take a little trip all through the canyon. They have those little donkeys that you hire, those little burros. They look like mice with thyroid trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I rented one, and they're stubborn little devils. I'm yanking, and I'm pulling, and he won't move. So finally, I said to the head guide, I said, how do I get him to move? He said, just a minute, neighbor. <laughs> Harvard man. <laughs> he walked 
How come you got a great big sledgehammer? Did he all alone hit this donkey right between the eyes? I says, well, what on earth did you do that for? He says, well, first, you got to get their attention. <laughs> Get on this bony little devil. See, now, how anything filled with hay could be so hard, I'll never figure it out. <laughs> now, here we go up the walls of the Grand Canyon. Eighteen idiots, all of us on donkeys, see. And we get about halfway up, and the head guy goes, and the wind was with him. I said, oh. <laughs> <coughs> Well, I figured it was some kind of a secret order, so I passed it on. <laughs> ride for about three hours. See, and finally we get up the top, and the head guy says, well, here we are, neighbors. Isn't it beautiful down there? I says, it's beautiful down there. Will you bring us up here? For <laughs> this old timer was a piff. I said, the people fall off of these cliffs often. He says, only once. <laughs> You know, you know when you travel around the country, you meet a lot of nice people. I met a big Texan. Anybody from Texas? Huh? Yeah, yeah boy. You can always tell a Texan. Not much, but you can. <laughs> well, there's a place to visit if you've never been in Texas. You name it, they got it. You name it, they ain't got it. You didn't need it anyhow. <laughs> Down there, they've got miles and miles of nothing but miles and miles. <laughs> down there. In the hotel, they don't, they have the rooms there, but they don't have towels that says his and hers. They have one big towel that says you all. <laughs> and those Texans, they're, they're belligerent devils, some of them, you know. There was a guy walked into the dentist's office, and the dentist says, your teeth are perfect. He says, drill anyhow, I'll feel lucky. <laughs> hey, you know, I was going by uh, in Texas. Oh, by the way, I'm going to be down in Houston at the Fat Stock Show. I'm going to be there in, 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 in uh, this month. And the, uh, you know, they, um, uh, there's a fella coming over from Australia. He's considered the fastest draw. Now, this is not known. I don't like to brag. I'm considered one of the fastest draw in the United States. I've never gone out for competition, but they've asked me to come to Houston and defend this title. This guy's coming over from Australia, and he's going to show you how fast I am. Here, you yell draw. draw. Want to see it again? <laughs> Out of on television to watch these Texan pictures that they have on. Like, the, you know, the one I love is Gunsmoke. I used to like that little guy, little Chester. Now, now, come on, Doc. Now, the marshal needs you. <laughs> now, there's a fella over at the Long Branch been shot about 300 times. <laughs> Just ain't holding blood. <laughs> now, grab a handful of corks and come on, will you? <laughs> now, you're a good doctor. I'll never forget what you did for me. Now, come on, Doc. <laughs> John Wayne in pictures. John Wayne, see, walks in all by himself. He says, don't reach for that gun, partner. I'm one of the best shots that come ever. You ever see John Wayne walk? <laughs> don't reach for that gun. I'm one of the best shots that ever come out of Texas. See that little dog over there with that fly on his tail? Watch me shoot it off. Wham! Wham. <laughs> that was it, buddy. <laughs> drummer can see, but he gets interested. <laughs> we'll try it again. We'll try it again. <clears throat> I'm from Texas. See that little dog with that fly on his tail? <laughs> Watch me shoot it off. <laughs> Wait till I shoot it! That's the way that happens every time. You hire an Italian orchestra leader and the whole family's got a job. <laughs> Again. See that little fly with that dog on his tail? <laughs> well, that's what I get for working without cars. <laughs> See that little dog with that fly on his tail? Watch me shoot it off. Ooh. <laughs> oh, but that's smart. <laughs> Looks like that little dog's gonna have to learn to wag something else. <laughs> <laughs> Gertrude and Heathcliff, Gertrude and Heathcliff, the two seagulls were flying over Texas, see? And this big jet goes by. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness, did you see how fast that bird was going? She said, yeah, I saw, I saw, so what? So what? Your tail was on fire, you'd go that fast. <laughs> Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, the show tonight is called The Red Skelton Scrapbook because we don't follow the regular format of the show. Now, before we go any further, I would like to tell you a story that I doubt if any of you have ever heard before. It happened when I was a little boy back in Vincent, Indiana. I was about eight years old. I used to sell newspapers on the corner. And one day there was a gentleman came up to me and he said, uh, what do they do in this town for excitement, son? And I said, well, there's a big road show in town tonight. And there's a big comedian in the show. It's at the Pantheon Theater. And uh, he's here tonight. And there'll be a lot of people go see him. He says, are you going to go see the show? I said, well, no, I don't, I don't have that kind of money. And he says, well, uh, would you go if you could get in? I said, well, sure, but I have to ask my mother first, and I have to sell my papers. So he bought all my papers. He gave me a dollar for my papers. And uh, he says, you be back here at 8 o'clock, and I'll see that you get in, because I know the manager of the theater. So I went home, and I told my mother, and she says, it's all right, but be sure and come right straight home. So I went back to the theater, and sure enough, here was this gentleman standing in front of the theater. He took me up to the doorman, and they put me in the balcony. And I sat there, and all of a sudden, the curtain went up, and the first person out on the stage was the gentleman who bought my newspapers from me, Mr. Ed Wynn. Well, I wanted to be in show business all, uh, ever since I was about five, see. Well, I was all uh, excited and everything. I went backstage and I knocked on the stage door and he brought me backstage. And for the first time in my life, I saw the border lights and the footlights. And he held me up to the big asbestos curtain. You know, the big fire curtain that comes down to divide the audience from the stage in case of fires or anything. But it has a small peak hole. And he held me up so that I could see the audience. And it was the first time in my life I'd seen those beautiful faces and that right then I knew that that's what I wanted to be, is to be in show business and try to make people laugh. So he said, if you want to be a comedian, remember, just do comedy. Don't ever do anything. Just do comedy, see? Now, what I'm leading up to is when he did his first dramatic role on Playhouse 90, Requiem for a Heavyweight, see? I couldn't help reminding him. I sent him a telegram. I said, remember, just do comedy. <laughs> that day and for 40 years, ladies and gentlemen, Ed Wynn has been my idol. And his contribution to the American comedy, the Americana of the theater, has been tremendous. And I'll never forget his kindness and his encouragement, a gentle, talented man. And, and I'm deeply honored, ladies and gentlemen, that he's consented to come on and host our special program tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, my very dear friend, Mr. Ed Wynn. <laughs> Thank you very much, Reggie. Yeah. Well, I, I used my well-worn words. You embarrassed me, you know. No, you really did. No. But this is a wonderful place you've got here. Oh, yes. It's awfully nice for a, for a newsboy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> As I listened to that great eulogy, almost, no. I thought I was dead. You know? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'll tell you, the program's going to be different tonight, oh, Reggie. <laughs> <laughs> no more ad-libbing, but that's right. Yes. But this program is going to be different, ladies and gentlemen. Let me say one thing to you. Yes. I just don't know really how to say this. I'm trying to read it. <laughs> Before we start, I just do want to... I want to tell you this, Red, truly. During my long career, I, I have made and I've lost lots and lots of money, you know? Yes. But that dollar that I gave you in Indiana is probably the best investment I ever made. Oh, I'm sure kind. of it. That's really you. true. You're very kind. Oh, not at all, not at all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Since, uh, since you mentioned it, I, uh, I just happened to think there were only 18 newspapers there, you know, and I gave you a dollar. 18 yeah. papers were 90 cents. You owe me 10 cents. <laughs> <laughs> really do. Papers were only 3 cents in those days. Oh, what is it? Yeah. Well, then I, I can't figure that, later. <laughs> yes. That's 54 cents. Yeah. You owe me 46 cents. <laughs> you don't have to pay me. You want it now? No, no, no. You just take your time, and if you ever make it, send it to me. <laughs> Red, really, I want to... I do, I want to say this publicly. I, I love you, really, really. Well, I want you to know that I love you. Thank you. First, won't do us any good. I'm married. <laughs> a few years ago, when the Red Skelton show uh, became the Red Skelton Hour, he set aside 10 or 12 minutes of pantomime, which, of course, has subsequently become known as uh, the silent spot. Now, one of the most talked about silent spots ever presented 
was the one entitled simply Max and Maxi.
Now, no scrapbook of Red Skelton would be complete without a thing called the Irish Tent. Now, this sketch, the August leader in this outlandish sketch, is and always has been a newcomer. His name is uh, David Rose. Now, David Rose has been with Red Skelton 17 years. 17 years, that's longer than I've, I've known Keenan. <laughs> He's generally known. But David doesn't get a salary for playing this show. Uh, his deal is that he teaches Red how to become an August leader, and Red teaches David how to be a comic. And personally, I feel that if either one of them make it, it's going to set show business back about 50 years. <laughs> but let's watch these two wonderful men in The Irish Tenor. I don't know who you are, but you sure lost a lot of weight, haven't you? <laughs> mm. At this time, I would like to sing. I would like to sing. I have to sing. <laughs> 25 or 30 high-class musical selections. My first number will be entitled, entitled, <laughs> The Return of the Swallows by Belch. <laughs> Ready in about an hour. <laughs> we went. <laughs> Gee. Oh, I went to the dentist today. I went to the dentist. Hey, he said, Your teeth are perfect. You have the most beautiful choppers I've ever seen in my life. Beautiful teeth. But my gums have got to come out. <laughs> oh, still with us, huh? I thought you were painted there. <laughs> there we are. Anybody we know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who you are, but you sure lost a lot of weight, haven't you? I did that again in case somebody stepped out of the room while I did it while I was going. <laughs> I would like to, uh, I would like to sing now. Uh, get a sound A for me, will you? Uh, oh, oh, oh. Just fortissimo. Go 
Well, you knew I wasn't Robert Merrill when you came in here. <laughs> when the old gray goose is dead, the one she's been saving, the one she's been saving. enough to do it. <laughs> you folks standing up back there, I'll have a seat for you in a minute. <laughs> It'll be a little soggy, but you can sit in. <laughs> How many horses are there to this thing? Eighty-six. Eighty-six. I've heard of myself. I don't care. <laughs> uh, I don't mind singing for you, but I ain't gonna suffer. I'll tell you. <laughs> heard it. It's lousy. I don't care for it at all. Got a voice is between the rip of a rag and a strip of a gear. You know? <laughs> Pick it up anytime. Oh, they're gonna start laughing at us in a minute. Pick it up. Start playing, buddy. They're wise to it. Hey! Not so loud. Yes, fortissimo. <laughs> he had died in the mill pond. <laughs> It died in the mill pond. I do a single, you know. <laughs> it died in the mill pond. A mighty smart move. <laughs> The goslings are crying, the goslings are crying, the goslings are crying because their mommy's dead. Why don't you feed that thing? What's the matter with you there? How do you like that? All the time I thought it was my singing. <laughs> Anison, the headache tablet to relieve pain, so relax tension, calm nerves. Anison has brought you this portion of the Red Skelton Hour. Now, ladies and gentlemen, in the years that the Tom Hansen dancers have been performing on the Red Skelton Hour, they have had some outstanding numbers. And tonight we're presenting one of them, the American Hoedown.
Among the most requested of Red's pantomime is one called the Timpanist, or it's a man who heads the cymbal section of a symphony called the Head Simp. <laughs>
Many years ago, ladies and gentlemen, when Red Skelton first came to Hollywood, MGM made a screen test. Now that screen test became a comedy classic. And as a result of it, Red starred in dozens and dozens of, of the comedy shows in the films in, the, in that particular studio. Dozens of them. Certainly it is the most famous and the most requested of Red's routines that I'm speaking of at this time. More than anything else he does, Red has become identified with a skit called Guzzler's Gym. Personally, I, I'll never forget it. I've seen it. I, it's just great. There's not much more I can say about Guzzler's Gin, except that it's about as perfect a piece of comedy material as there is. Now, no matter how many times as I say that I've seen it, I, I don't know, I kind of break up laughing about it, even when I think of it. <laughs> Just thinking of it kind of breaks me up. I, I can't help it. Well, anyhow, here's the last page of Red Skelton scrapbook, Guzzler's Gin. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> the uh, Federal Communications of the FCC say that you cannot sell anything on radio or television that contains more than 26% by volume of alcohol. Now, you can sell beer or wine, but nothing stronger than that, see? But I'd like to show what might happen if they could sell hard liquor on television and the announcers had to use this stuff instead of just saying, try this, try that. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Lovely evening is that bring the children close to the television because this is the Guzzler's Gin program. <laughs> if you try Guzzler's, it comes in two sizes, the college size and the jumbo elephant size. <laughs> With Guzzler's, there's no bad taste, no after. Bit kind of far for a boom, man, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> no upsetting the nerves, no bad taste, just a nice smooth drink. Pour it in your glass and drink it right down. But be sure and ask for Guzzlers, a nice, smooth drink. I haven't owned the Culver City Hotel in years. <laughs> Our guest star of the evening, Jay Newton Numskull, Doctor of Poetry. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. My first poem. Put 15 cents on number... That ain't... <laughs> My first poem. The Proposal. I asked my girl if me she'd wed. With a smile in her roguish eyes, she said, go ask father. Now she knew that I knew that her father was dead. She knew that I knew of the life he had led. So she knew that I knew what she meant when she said, go ask father. <laughs> now that's our announcement. Back to our announcer and Wolf Moth sponsors, Guzzler's Gin. <laughs> <laughs> this is a Guzzler's Gin program you're looking at. <laughs> now you try Guzzler's, it comes in two sizes. <laughs> Get the college size tonight, one bottle, you're in a class for yourself. <laughs> There's no bad taste, no after effects. <laughs> no upsetting the nerves, just a nice smooth. What on your class? <laughs> hey, that's good paint remover, too. What on your class? Goes my nails. <laughs> I'll never.
never be able to pluck chickens again. <laughs> well, you glad I'm digging right now and let me do it and ask for good again. A uh, nice mood. <laughs> Why can't I get an oatmeal program? <laughs> a little toast, a little toast. Here's the moments that are stolen, and stealing is certainly wrong. <laughs> but after those moments were stolen, to whom do they really belong? <laughs> if the husband doesn't come to claim them or the wife doesn't make a fuss, Let's hold our heads up proudly and say they belong to us. <laughs> Boy, if you had a bushel of apples and they were left alone to rot, and a neighbor came by and he ate one, would you blame him? Certainly not. <laughs> the apples were made to be eaten, and moments were made for delight. So that's what we'll tell our conscience if it keeps us awake tonight. <laughs> I've lost my taste bud. <laughs> Finally dry gin, you know that? A nice mood. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> don't get me wrong, it's really good stuff, kid. It's really good. But when I smell it, it makes my mouth water, and I don't like it diluting. <laughs> Sin. The warden said, you have one hour of grace. He said, okay, pal, send her in. <laughs> and now, back to our announcer who will sign off the Guzzler's Gin program. <laughs> in a minute. Next week, Red's guest will be Paul Anka and Forsooth. And now a word from our sponsor of this portion of the Red Skelton Hour, Life Boy. Wherever this man goes, he packs a 38. The man's name is Sedler. The 38 is Life Boy. Why 38? 38 hour deodorant protection. Jimmy Sedler meets a lot of people. He needs a lot of deodorant protection. 
Using Life Boy regularly gives him 38 hours worth. Hey, should you be packing a 38? Life Boy, 38 hour deodorant soap. The smaller the pilot, the bigger the mess. That's one reason why some parts of my laundry get dirtier than others. So I use new formula whisk. Unlike powders, whisk puts its strength where the dirt is. Use only half a cup. Pour some full strength on the extra dirty places, then add the rest to clean your whole wash. Whisk washes everything cleaner. Whisk <laughs> puts its strength where the dirt is. And now, before we put the scrapbook away, I'd like to turn you back to Red Skelton. Red? Thank you. I, I had to call you back just for a moment, Ed. Why? Yes. Why? Why? Well, I'll tell you, I couldn't let you get away without telling you how honored we were oh, that you were on our show this evening. Go on, it was a great you. privilege. You're very kind. You're a great artist. You're very kind. Listen, he's truly a great artist. No, no. I really mean it. I watched, I watched, I watched everything. And you're great. <laughs> now, before I leave, I'd like to give you a little advice. Yes. The same advice that I gave you in Indiana. Yes. Do you mind? No. <laughs> Just do comedy. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Wynn. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight is our last show of this season. We'll return in the fall in full color, and our sponsors and staff join me now in wishing you a very happy summer. May you be happy in your work and happy in your vacation. And if by chance you should remember some silly little thing that I've said or done, and it brings back a smile to your face or a chuckle to your heart, then our part for the past season, with the efforts alone, then were rewarding. Good night for now, and may God bless. Ladies and gentlemen, it's really a lot of fun to try and make people happy. And if we brought a chuckle or two into your homes this evening, we're very proud. In behalf of our sponsors and staff, may we thank you for allowing us to be a part of your evening. So until next week, we say goodbye for now, and may God bless. Good night. <laughs> New Lux Liquid with Dermacell to improve the appearance of your hands while you do dishes has brought you the second half of the Red Skelton Hour. We must call it a day while we're putting away the Skelton scrapbook. In a week we'll begin many things to go in the Skelton scrapbook. This is our Gilmore speaking. Thank you very much, Reggie. No. Well, I, I used my well-worn words. You embarrassed me, you know. No. You really did. No. <laughs> but this is a wonderful place you've got here. Oh, yes. It's awfully nice for a, for a newsboy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> As I listened to that great eulogy, almost, no. I thought I was dead. You know? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'll tell you, the program's going to be different tonight, oh, Reggie. <laughs> <laughs> no more ad-libbing, but that's right. Yes. That this program is going to be different, ladies and gentlemen. Let me say one thing to you. Yes. I just don't know really how to say this. I'm trying to read it. 
<laughs> Before we start, I just do want to, I want to tell you this, Fred, truly. During my long career, I, I have made and I've lost lots and lots of money, you know? But that dollar that I gave you in Indiana is probably the best investment I ever made. Oh, I'm sure kind. of that. That's Thank really you. true. You're very kind. Oh, Thank not you. at all. Not at all. You. Since, you it, uh, since, uh, since you mentioned it, I, uh, I just happened to think there were only 18 newspapers there, you know, and I gave you a dollar. 18 papers were 90 cents. You owe me 10 cents. <laughs> <laughs> really do. Papers were only 3 cents in those days. Oh, were they really? Yeah. Well, then I, I can't figure that. Wait a minute. <laughs> yes, that's 54 cents. Yeah. You owe me 46 cents. <laughs> you don't have to pay me. You want it now? No, no, no. no. <laughs> you just take your time, and if you ever make it, send it to me. <laughs> <laughs> Fred, really, I want to... I do. I want to say this publicly. I, I love you, really, really. Well, I want you to know that I love you. Thank you. First of all, it won't do us any good. I'm married. 